there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is actually a spicy update to a previous story. And the title on this is, Am I the Askinoff for Letting My Son Help Me in the Kitchen? Hello, everyone. Just saw my post on Instagram. I totally forgot about this account. I thought I should give an update. It is not a happy update because my husband and I are going through a divorce. Stemming from, stemming from that story before? After my last update, everything was fine until my husband started acting weird and out of character. I'll not go into details that much, but he was having an affair with someone he met online. So apparently my husband has been using online forums, even Reddit, to vent his frustration about Matt, and he feels he has failed as a father, and me not supporting his decision is emasculating him. That is when he found his mistress, 35 female, who poisoned his ears that I am not a good wife because I should obey my husband. She and my husband badmouthed me, and she even had some questionable words for my son, Matt, as well. So we have been fighting a lot about this. He blames me because none of this would have happened if I just respected his authority as the man of the house, and that mistress understands him and knows when to shut up. <laughs> well, she checks all the boxes then. She understands me, and she knows when to shut up. I bet she cooks and cleans too, right? I still cannot believe he will turn his back on us just because my son liked cooking. And if you don't remember the previous story, that was it. He enjoys cooking, and that wasn't a manly enough thing for dad. This is not the man I married. I sometimes feel sad because I've been struggling with depression for a long time. My sons are pretty depressed too. I took them to therapy, especially Matt because he believes we are divorcing because of him. He took it hard. He even told me he will stop cooking if that means his dad will stay with us. Dad, ooh. My other sons are also very sad, too, but so far they've been understanding. My father-in-law is 100% on my side. Okay, this was the ex-military father-in-law who is husband's dad. That was like, what the hell's wrong with you to the husband? And we were all very surprised by his response, but, but we're here for it. He has been helping me with a lawyer and pretty much disowned my husband for his behavior towards me and my kids. That's been my life. I'm struggling a lot with the financial situations. I did get a job, but it isn't that high in pay. My soon-to-be ex has moved in with his mistress. I just hope we will see good days soon. That's all. Pray for us. You know what? We're going to get some help with feedback on this from the one, the only, the magnificent, the beautiful, the courageous and kind, Candy Thunder. Oh my God, it's Candy Thunder. <laughs> do you ever feel like women who, like she's obeying, she knows when to shut up. Do you ever feel like she is just playing this role in order to get this man? Like, Yeah. Because I think that she's just pretending to be something that she's not. She's giving him what she thinks that he wants. It, has he even met her? Like, Well, I mean, they're moving in together, so. Oh, I guess uh, so, yeah, okay. Yeah. But I think he's met her. Like, met I feel her. Like, like this is just like. I don't know, playing a role, getting what you want. And then I would love to see what's going to happen after, after she has what she wants. But for him to, to trade in his wife and children because his son wanted to cook is the wildest thing in, in my mind. I can't imagine. Why does that have to be a gender specific thing? Like why, why does cooking, like cooking is how like you sustain your life, like feeding yourself, knowing those things are basic their basic skills like why why is that a gender specific thing to this guy i do not i my brain cannot comprehend why this is such a big it's got to come from a place of insecurity about himself right it's got to be it's got to be his insecurity about his his own masculinity showing through his his need to force that on his own boys and his failure to to man up his one boy is his own failure as a man he perceives to be and and now it may be it may be just as much him feeling like he has failed as a man and as a father and him reclusing out of that in defeat yeah. uh, and him basically starting this new life because but, he's conceded defeat in the first one. But I mean, it can't be how he was raised because his dad 100% disagrees with what his son is doing. Now, so he wasn't raised now, that way. Maybe. I, I, yeah. yeah, I don't know that we can say father-in-law's opinion now is indicative of how husband was raised because people change and they grow wiser. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, grandparents... Grand, grandparents have different viewpoints now than they did whenever they were parents, right? Or right. whenever they were just parents. I mean, I was, as far as my upbringing goes, I was raised to do stuff outside. My, you know, my dad and my brother, I don't remember it, but they taught me how to change my oil, air up the tires, like do all of that stuff. But I also learned from my dad, like how to grill. I learned from my mom how to cook. So there was never like a, I'm a girl, so I can't do this mm. or I'm not a boy, so I can't do this. Like, I don't ever remember that being a thing in my household. Um, so I think 
And I don't know if that, I just, I just can't understand it. I can't understand throwing your life away. And like he, in the original stories, he, I felt like he was going to change, but instead he went online looking for somebody who would validate what he thought. And he found someone to validate those feelings. And then was like, you see, I'm right because this woman obeys me and she knows when to shut up. So therefore I'm going to leave you and be with this woman because she gives me everything I could possibly need. 20, 20 years from now, you are going to regret it. Oh, I, you are going to regret everything that you have done. I don't think it's going to take that long. I think I think he's going to regret this hard. My biggest problem with all of this is that Matt, the son, feels like it's his fault. Yes. There's no way for him to not feel like right. it's his fault. Like the husband has made this. He has placed yeah. basically the blame on his son for having a preference that's not masculine enough for him. And and the son now is going to have those scars, those emotional scars he carries with him for a long ass time. And for the dad to put that on his right. child is the most cowardly thing. Like it's it's just disgusting. And yes, yeah. yes, I see a lot of comments in, in here like his failure as a father is actually leaving his wife and kids, not not, you know, not making his son manly enough and right. i agree i yes. agree getting him to see that is is a different issue <laughs> but also validation validation is not someone who just sh- knows when to shut up and does what they're told that's not validation that's obedience that's not it's not <laughs> yeah. validation that's yes. not somebody agreeing with you that's somebody obeying with you those are that's somebody obeying you those are two very different things and i this man is weak indeed i said this the other night i did the the youtube live with dusty but i my one of my sayings, I'm going to get a button up here that says grow the f- up because this is ridiculous. You're throwing your life away because your wife because your son enjoyed cooking. Like that is the shittiest thing you could possibly do. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is from AITA and is titled, Am I the astronaut for calling my girlfriend a dumbass and taking away her key after she almost burned my house down? My girlfriend wanted a pizza. I have really good frozen pizzas from the local Italian market. They are made fresh, and if you do them up on a pizza stone, they come out perfect. I have made these for us many, many times. It's a simple process. You take the pizza stone and put it in the oven. Let the oven preheat. Put the pizza on the paddle and slide it onto the hot stone. Once it's ready, you slide the paddle under the pizza and pull it out. Put it on the carving board and cut it. Easy, right? Nope. She said my pizza stone was dirty. It was scorched, not dirty. So her brilliant idea was to make the pizza on my plastic cutting board. Mm. <laughs> Wait, tell me that she then decided to, uh, to to microwave something with foil on it, right? Because, because that way she could just take the cutting board out with the oven mitts and cut the pizza without having to use all the tools. I got home to see black smoke coming out of my house and my girlfriend on the phone with 911. My dog is not on his leash and he's going crazy. I go to the front door to see if it's hot in the house or if I can see flames. No flames, no heat. I get to the stove and turn it off. I open the sliding door to let more smoke out and get my leash on the way out. The firefighters are there within five minutes and the smoke is already dissipating. They go in to make sure. All clear. Thank God they were there less than an hour. It is covered by the city. If it was over an hour, I would have been charged for the response. My oven is f***ed though. And I have a lot of smoke damage to clean up. I told my girlfriend I was glad she was okay, but that she's a dumbass and she wasn't allowed in my house alone for a while. I took her key away. We do not live together, but she has roommates and likes having a big house to herself on her days off. She says that it's a mistake anyone could make and that I'm an asshole for calling her names. Yes, she said those words. She says it's my fault for not just getting microwave pizza and having to eat fancy. <laughs> You're not helping yourself, lady. Uh, you're not, you're not helping yourself, but look, look, man. I mean, I wish we knew ages here. Ages, ages would be, would be helpful. It it really would be helpful because if this is a young adult, like, uh, a, but a young adult is more prone to make this mistake than an older adult, right? Uh, yes, it's stupid. She should know better, right? Like any, any kind of experience in life skills would, would clue you in that, you know, putting plastic in the oven is probably not a great idea. Uh, however, I do think that that OP's response here saying you're a dumbass and you're not allowed in my house 
clearly she did something stupid. She knows she did something stupid. Her response here, getting pissed off about the name calling, I understand, saying this wouldn't have happened if you if you didn't have to eat fancy. Not helping your case here, lady. Not 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 helping your case here. Uh <laughs> I understand his frustration, though, and I think it all goes back to what's his goal, right? If he's done or if he doesn't doesn't have if his goal is not for this relationship to continue and grow and strengthen, then he's, his response is perfectly in line with his goals here. Uh, if he does want this relationship to flourish later on, I think you got to look at this a little bit differently and say, you know, what is the resolution here? The resolution that he came with is distance. It's like separation. He siloed her from being able to damage his life with her ignorance. And I understand, but that a relation, a relationship does not make. So, uh, if, if he doesn't give a shit about being with this girl, yeah, sure. NTA. Um, if he does, if he does, then we're in ESH land because he could have handled this differently. I don't even know that it's a should have. What do you think? Candy thunder is, should he have not called her a dumbass and like took her key away for doing something stupid? She, she said, you know, she didn't feel like using the microphone, but she said, uh, if she had done this, she would hope that I would call her a dumbass. I couldn't kick you out, though. <laughs> not that not that part. No, of course not that part. I think it all goes to goes back to your goals, though, right? It is, you know, what what do you want to get out of this? ESH is everyone sucks here. Uh, if if you're old enough to live on your own, you're old enough to know not to put plastic in the oven. She doesn't it's live not, on her own. She lives with roommates. That's living on your own. If you've moved out of your parents' house. You should. Uh, I said that I learned in yeah. utero not to put plastic in the oven. It's not that complicated. Which uh, which one of our kids tried to make mac and cheese in the microwave without putting water in it? Caden and Kieran. Caden Thunder and Kieran Thunder. They've both done it years apart. Like how? How? Uh, so yeah, it's like I have two answers for this. It, it, if he if he doesn't give a shit, it's an NTA. If he does give a shit, it's an ESH. I would think if you're in the dating phase with somebody and you're not living together. And, and they make a big boo-boo and it affects your life in a negative way, like you're probably going to handle that a little more delicately than if you are married. And if you're married and you have been for several years, you're going to be like, why are you such a dumbass? But but if you're courting someone, it'd be like, I don't know. I feel like it'd be more delicate there. Put grapes in the in the microwave. I didn't know grapes in the microwave were a thing. I, I understand what you're saying. And he could have been more delicate about what she did. But at the same time, if you're thinking about building a life with someone who doesn't know that plastic doesn't go in the oven, then mm. you might be rethinking your choices. True. True. And also to your pain creates change remark, uh, he could be looking to create enough pain to make sure this never happens again. And be like, since, since your mommy and daddy never taught you not to put plastic in the oven, I'm going to teach you right now. Here's some tough love. Yeah. She's got to earn, earn the trust back. You got to earn the oven back. Maybe it was weaponized incompetence. Maybe she just really doesn't want to ever cook for him. So she's like, I'm going to do this up front and then he'll never let me near the oven again. I'll never have to cook, ladies. It's brilliant. <laughs> she keeps talking without the microphone. He had a knee-jerk reaction to something that happened. His, yeah. his dog was in danger. His house, he thought, was burning down. Like, yeah. He, had, he reacted according to the level of pain that she caused him. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, it was a knee-jerk reaction. It wasn't something he had the time to think through and then be, then be like, okay, let's handle this like this. Uh, and he does have a lot of smoke damage to deal with, too. Smoke can screw stuff up real bad. Hey there, it is Dusty Thunder once again with an AITA story from Reddit for you that goes like this. Am I the astronaut for making my son go to college? I, 48 female, didn't go to college. My husband, 52 male, didn't go either. We worked extremely hard to live a comfortable lifestyle, and our dream was to send our kids to college and pay their tuition. One of my sons, 18 male, does not and has never wanted to go to college. He's worked at a fast food restaurant since he was 16, and he really loves his job. He says he wants a future in the business, but that was never the plan. This was only supposed to be a two-year job before he went to college. He's been saying that he doesn't want to go to college, but I don't want him to miss out on life 
life experiences and have grief for the rest of his life. We already applied to college last year and he got accepted. He's set to go in August. Yesterday, he got promoted to manager at 18 years old. He would be making 60 k a year, so he would be able to afford an apartment, a car, and necessities in life, insurance, etc. It's not bad money, but he would have to work 50 hours a week, including night shifts, 10-hour shifts, and often doing stuff for his job while he's not on the clock. He was extremely happy, but I don't want him to work long hours with that kind of pay. I'd rather him go to college and find a good paying job where he can work a 9 to 5, 40 hours a week and make pretty good money from that. My, son's claim, my son claims that it's useless because if he becomes a general manager, that he'll make 100 k a year. But I don't want him to regret it and feel left out when all of his friends go to college except for him. I won't go back on this. We worked too hard for him not to go to college. I told him he needs to turn down the promotion and put his two weeks in so he can go to college. He told me he'd pay me back for everything I already paid for, but I was still persistent on him going to college. He then said I was an asshole and a controlling person for forcing him to do something he doesn't want to do and living through him, vicariously, I assume. Am I the astronaut? Ah, this is going to be a complicated conversation. What are your thoughts? My first thought here is this kid's, in, this kid's 18. How are you forcing him? Everybody's going to have a, a different view of this situation, right? He's 18 and can do what he wants. Lady Van Landingham says, that's where the legality has me a little bit confused because I don't think you could force him to do this. Now, where that gets tricky is it's okay. You're a legal adult now. You can do whatever you want. But if you're going to live under my roof and let me provide for you, then you're going to do what I tell you to do. That's where that situation is going to get complicated, right? Uh, that's a whole other battle he's going to have to fight. He's getting this promotion, which means he'll be able to have an apartment. He'll be able to have a car. He'll be able to have these things. The way the OP says that makes me think that he doesn't have it yet, right? So that that does get a little bit complicated there. OP's view on what's going to happen if if her child goes to college is outdated, in my opinion, here as well. Because you know the the way the opportunities that exist today that are not for your degree dependent are greater than ever before. College does not equal a lifetime of success, and I don't know that it ever has, but just going doesn't mean that your life is going to be a great success. Uh, and, and there are millions and millions and millions of people with plenty of student debt, uh, student loan debt that can attest to that, right? So there's like an adjustment in thinking that needs to happen. It, it seems like OP thinks if, if he goes, he'll be successful. And it just doesn't mean that. I think that's there has to be a definition of success kind of cemented here. Um, and really, as a parent, I think the conversation is, what is what do you see with your future? And right now, you know, he's like, I don't have to go waste the four years and waste the money to do that. I can do what I want to do right now. But you can always change your mind. How many non-traditional students are there? Tons. It is never too late to change if you decide you want to go a different direction, which is where I would advise patients. I would advise the patients play. Let them find their own way. Don't force them to go do this because especially today, it does not automatically equate to success. It just doesn't. The world is different. You can make your own way and have even greater success doing all kinds of things. The side hustle is a thing right now. Bay Fox, just because she regrets it doesn't mean he will. Right now, he's he's going to regret her sending him. That'll be the immediate regret that may never fade. It's complicated. Um, so I'm I'm sitting at yes. First of all, he's 18. You can't force him to go. Uh, so it is an asshole move just attempting to do it because he's 18. I understand. I understand your desire to provide your child with a better life than you had. We all want that but forcing them to do something that is against their will because you think it might be the right thing to do is a stretch. That's a tough. And if they already have an alternative path that they want to do, there's no downside to it. The downside is, according to you, that you don't want them to regret not doing it. They'll always have the chance to come back and do it. So, I, yeah, I think you are. Um, now, how big of one is, uh, is a different conversation here. I think, it's a, I think it's a should do it differently. I'm going three. I'm not running hard at this because I understand where you're coming from. And I think you wanting your child to go is one thing. Doing it in a different way that allows them some say in their future and in their present would be the way I think it should be handled here. Boxer mama, he might need a bachelor's degree to become a higher up manager. And depending on... Depending on what organization he's a part of, if he's moving up the ranks from inside, a lot of organizations will pay for that schooling and they will offer the scheduling for that schooling. So forcing it now is just tough. 
It's changing and it needs to change. The world is just different. Hey there, it is Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one's a spicy one. Let's figure out how spicy. It is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Letting My Daughter Keep Her Room? My 47 male daughter, Stacy, 15 female, has one of the two rooms in my house with an in-suite bathroom. It's a largest room with a nice bay window. Obviously very nice. I've recently become engaged to my girlfriend of three years, Alice, 33 female, and her landlord has recently hiked her rent, so we're planning to have her move in with me. She has some kids. She has two daughters, 13 female, 10 female, and two sons, 11 male, nine male. She's also pregnant with our daughter due in about five months. I've made it absolutely clear to my daughter as a condition of getting her approval on moving my girlfriend in that she is allowed to keep her room and she is also allowed to have a full lock on her door. For what it's worth, I also got my son's 24 male blessing to give away his old room. Although that's more of a moot point. (laughs) It's a moot point. It's Cal's opinion. As he lives with his own girlfriend now, my daughter plans to go to school locally and I have told her in no uncertain terms that she's welcome to live at home for the rest of my life and that she can inherit the house. I bought the house with her mother and paid it off with a large part of her mother's life insurance 10 years ago, so it only seems fair. She says she's all right as long as she has her room and her bathroom and she's allowed to put a lock on her door. She even has a toaster oven and a mini fridge in there, so I guess she's pretty well set up. Stacy will be giving up a room that she's currently using as a studio project space. She does art videos and voiceovers, so even her larger room will become a bit more cramped, and she'll definitely need the extra space she has. There will be a bedroom for Alice's girls, Stacy's old project room, and Alice's boys will be getting my son's old room. I'm going to be putting in a finished nursery slash bedroom in the basement for our new daughter. Uh, Alice thinks that this is unfair. She thinks it was wrong of me to make the decision without her, and she also thinks that she should move her two daughters into Stacy's room, and that Stacy would have to move to the smaller room that they'll be getting. The two of them already share a smaller room than the one I'm moving them into as it is, so they're getting an upgrade regardless. Alice thinks that it's not fair for Stacy to have a bathroom all day her- all to herself, and that there won't be enough bathrooms for everyone else. She also disapproves of Stacy being able to lock everyone out. There were other small things she didn't like that I agreed to with Stacy. The fact that she's able to be paid for any babysitting or the fact that my older car, her mom's old car, is hers when she gets her driver's license. We'll have our own bathroom in the master bedroom and the house has three other bathrooms besides one on each floor. One near what will be her girl's room, one not far from what will be the boy's room, and one that will basically be directly next to the new finished room. I told Alice... That my deal with Stacy is non-negotiable, set in stone, and that it's literally a condition of her even moving in. Alice is upset that Stacy and I both have spaces completely dedicated to ourselves. I have my office, which I need because I work from home and have projects besides, and there aren't a whole lot of other spaces to put people. I told her she can pretty much do what she wants in the living room, but that is what it is, and there's pretty much nothing to be done about it. A bigger house is not an option unless Alice is going to start making a hell of a lot more money and buy her own bigger house. It's already a pretty big house, and housing is expensive. I told her that she's already getting a break, but my only expectation is her to contribute 15 to 20 percent of household bills. If we're doing it proportionately, it would be more like 25 to 30 percent. We keep separate finances and we've agreed to a prenup. Alice just seems upset that I won't change the setup even though even though there's no real way to change it. And she's accused me of treating Stacy like a spoiled little princess and letting her be the queen of the house. There's the real issue. Frankly, my daughter comes first. She's lived here all of her life, and I already know it's going to be a big adjustment to having all these other kids move in. As much as I love Alice, and as much as I want our relationship to work out, if it's a matter of choosing between the two of them, then my relationship with Alice is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I've told her that if she comes into this with wicked stepmother vibes, that will be the end of things. She thinks I'm being unreasonable. Am I the astronaut? We have an update. Before we get into that update, yes, this is this is like this is Cinderella vibes, 100. percent Everything is super reasonable that he's doing. He's like, with the context of of how this house has been paid off, I feel like it's only right to keep it within the side of the family. I get it. Like, I understand everything that OP is saying here, and it all seems reasonable. Somebody coming in and being upset that, that they're being given things, like, uh, hello, entitlement, right? It's a matter of control, and she's already seeing that that his daughter has a higher place than she does with him. So it's a matter of control. 
All right, here's the update. I got a lot of eye-opening insight and advice from my post, so I feel it's worth giving everyone an update, especially considering developments. First, to address a few questions that seemed to keep coming up before I lost the ability to read each and every reply, although I'm still trying. My son, 24 male, is my child from a previous relationship before I met and married my late wife. He has his own provisions in my will, but he's quite aware that the house goes to his sister. My own sister is to become guardian of my daughter if anything should happen to me. I love my sister as dearly as, dearly as I love anyone, and she and her niece love each other and get along great. I trust her completely if, God forbid, anything should happen. Yes, the basement is an unusual place for a nursery, but I was just trying to make people fit where they could go. The move was supposed to be happening within a month, and Alice's older kids needed rooms now. Meanwhile, the baby isn't going to be born for about five months, so she could go into a room that isn't made yet. Or you could get a room downstairs for the older kids to go into, and then there, that room could become the nursery. But I understand you have a complicated situation, sir. I honestly figured we could keep a, grib, a crib in our room for a bit, and after that, it's no big deal for a kid to have her own room in a finished basement. Also, honestly, I don't want to move my office. It's been where it is forever, and I don't want to move it. I can admit that. We've had the beginnings and groundwork for a finished basement since forever, but there was never any reason to really put a move on it. It was a big change to go from having more room than we need to just me and Stacy rattling around in the house to suddenly scrambling for space and not having enough. It was the obvious spot where an additional bedroom could go, but not a spot where a bedroom is now. Alice and I had talked about marriage and children more or less in the abstract on many occasions, and we both wanted to get married at some point if things continue to work out, and I wanted to have more children, although this pregnancy was quite unexpected expected. It was Alice's pregnancy combined with the rent hike on her place that accelerated the timetable on things. For what it's worth, the rent hike is real. I've seen the paperwork, and I have literally no reason to suspect the baby is not mine. But yes, the only reason why we got engaged so recently is because Alice got pregnant. The only reason why Alice and her kids would be moving in with me so suddenly is because she was likely to need to move somewhere. And I'd obviously like to be responsible for or be near or be or raise my coming daughter. To me, it made sense for my daughter to live with me. I never wanted to be an absentee part-time parent or to not have time to share space with my child. The circumstances all made sense, at least until now. I was definitely wary of Alice and paying more attention to her, especially after the many, many comments that I read. I came to Reddit to get a sanity check on whether or not I was being an asshole about my conditions with Stacy, not to try to actually make any kind of major life or relationship changes, but I didn't want to turn a blind eye either. It was Friday, and Stacy texted me, asking for an allowance. I was with Alice at the time. I went ahead and let the subject come up. I give Stacy $100 a week. Alice thinks that this is crazy and excessive. She thinks it's improper, and she's brought it up as an example of how she thinks I'm raising Stacy like a spoiled princess. She said as much again when I told her I was sending Stacy her allowance, but this time Alice also asked if her kids would get the same allowance after we get married. I told her that someday our new daughter would probably get an allowance just like Stacy does, but that there was no way I had any plans of shelling out an extra $400 a week for her other kids. Alice got upset. She said that Stacy wastes my money on shoes and makeup. She has previously criticized Stacy for wearing fancy sneakers, high heels, and makeup. And she said that I was showing favoritism and that that is a form of abuse. She complained about me letting Stacy buy things with my credit card and store my credit card on her phone when I don't even let Alice do that. She said that whatever money was going to the kids should be split up evenly amongst them. When I shrugged and told her that I, that, that wasn't going to happen, and that I wasn't going to cut Stacy's allowance, she snapped at me and said that a man living alone with his daughter and doting on her, like I do, is creepy and incestuous. And she said, you've just replaced your dead wife with your daughter and you need to stop. That was it. Sure, I've ignored a lot of red flags up till now, but that was it. She started trying to tell me about how it's unhealthy for me to be so close with Stacy and how she didn't want her kids to be neglected and how she wanted to be treated as an equal if we were getting married, but I interrupted her and I told her that I don't think we should be getting married. I told her I don't want her moving in and that we were going to need to work something else out. To be perfectly honest, my sister, my brother, and some of my friends have expressed some of the same misgivings about Alice that I've read, although they were generally a lot more gentle with it. I was in love with her. In fact, I'm still in love with her, and I wasn't seeing things clearly. I've told her I would always and definitely make sure that our child had a roof over her head, but that she was going to have to work something out for herself and her kids on her own. Obviously, we had a huge fight. She screamed at me. She called me a heartless bastard. She blamed Stacy for trying to sabotage our relationship. She guilt tripped me about the high cost of living and how I'm in an empty house all by myself. She also guilt tripped me about the stress on the 
baby, and I actually do feel bad and worry about that. She eventually broke down crying and told me to leave. In the past 10 years, this was the first relationship with a woman I've had that became serious. I love her, and this hurts. It hurts a hell of a lot. I told Stacy that she didn't have to bother moving her stuff out of her room, that Alice wasn't coming, and we hugged. She asked if this was her fault, and I told her no. I told her I honestly feel like marrying Alice would have been a huge mistake, even if the two of them could have been best buddies. I always wanted to have a few more kids, and I've missed having a wife, but things don't always happen the way we want. So I'm pretty sure my relationship with Alice is effectively over, even if we're going to be raising a child together for the first for the foreseeable future. My new daughter can have my son's old room whenever we work out whatever custody agreement we end up working out. I'm not sorry to be having another kid, even if I really wish the circumstances could be better. The red flags were always there. I guess it's better that I notice them now instead of later. <sighs> um, thank goodness. And to expand on some feedback here, we have the very lovely Candy Thunder. There's something I, I'm going to say it. I feel like if you have already had four kids, which is what she has, correct, that you're very aware of how to get pregnant um, and very aware of how not to get pregnant. And to me, it seems like. I don't understand. She, could, you, could you expand? She baby trapped on the, the guy. Subject? I think mm. she baby trapped him. I was trying mm. to be nice, but she baby trapped him. Mm. Um, because that's not what I was looking for you to expand upon. But, yeah, okay. I think that she saw an opportunity and and took it. And I don't say that lightly. Um, but she wanted to dictate everything about this guy and how he was parenting his daughter. And you creating a blended family is not something that happens overnight. You don't walk into a household where there's already established things going on and uproot those things and take things away and and try to dominate a child that already has like a routine and like a rhythm in the household. Like you do not do that. That is a surefire way to make sure that your family will never blend because at that point, his significant other is now the cause of her pain. He's, she has now caused all of this stuff to happen in the daughter's eyes. So therefore those two people are never going to get along. And his daughter was what? 16, 17. Yeah. 16. At, and she was trying to control the 16, like the 16, 17 year old relationship with those two. So I, I just feel like she, she did the opposite. It's further down. Further down? The, okay, yeah. sorry. It, re- it disappeared from the outline. I can't find it. Um, let's just look. 15. 15. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I can't. Yeah. And someone had said something about allowances being equal. And, and that only works. Like you can't just move in and say this allowance should be equal because I'm moving into your home. They weren't even married yet. Like at, at some point they had to have a discussion about how that would look. What would his role be in those, in her kids, the younger kids lives? Like if you and I were dating and I ended up pregnant, I would never move my kids in and be like, now give them a hundred dollars a week. Like that's, that's just, that's selfish. That feels entitled. Like that is not how you blend a family. Right. This Alice had no plans of blending this family. She was moving in. She wanted control and she wanted money. Yeah. And I was thinking that's, whether, that's I, what I was thinking the whole time. I'm, I'm like you know, the way that blended families happen when it's done the right way is I fall in love with you. I fall in love with your child or children. Mm-hmm. Then we blend families. Yeah. Uh, he said in the very beginning, the only reason that they're together is because she got pregnant. The only reason they got engaged because she got pregnant. The only reason mm-hmm. that he was looking to move her in because she got pregnant. Uh, that needs to be, that needs to be a spinoff because I got pregnant because I got pregnant. I, uh, that is not in in my eyes and other people may have different opinions, but to me, that is not a good enough reason for marriage. No, you can parent separately without getting married. And I understand that it's more difficult, but pregnancy is not the, like marriage is not the answer to pregnancy. I, and I firmly believe that because I feel like you're just one pregnancy is freaking hard newborns are incredibly difficult and like all of that combined with the first year of marriage that is that's hard that's, my my biggest issue with i think the lesson that we learned when when societally it was it was the standard or the norm or the expectation that if if you got pregnant you got married mm-hmm. is so many kids growing up in homes with unhappy parents because they got married because she was pregnant and they didn't love each other but they stayed in it and gave the, like, set the bar for what kids perceived to be a successful or happy marriage or what love is. And it got so into the ground 
that now we're like, you know what? That's probably not right. I probably need to set a better example for my kids for what they should expect yeah. for themselves, for what they should choose, for what love is. And then we started fixing it. And that's where I think blended families became more common. But yes, exactly. She she didn't try to blend a family. She tried a hostile takeover of an existing half a family that that could be blended. She just, she had a mark. There was also this weird, like, she felt like she was competing with his 15 mm-hmm. year old daughter. And I'm like, lady, you are, you are so you're double her age, more than double her age. Why, why do you feel the need to compete with a 15 year old? So she was wearing heels. So she was wearing makeup. Like, yeah, who cares? She's 15. Well, it was the first step in alienation. I, th- I, I feel like that was it. It was just, it was a very transparent play for her to drive a wedge because she needs yeah. to drive a wedge between them. If she's going to complete her ultimate uh. mission, which is to, have her kids be be fully provided for by him. And it sounds like he was trying to do that. Like he was trying to provide for her kids. He was putting, like he was bringing them in. He was making space for them. Yeah. And and doing all those things. But like it wasn't good enough. It wasn't fast enough. Mm-hmm. And and she thought that she could come between what dad and daughter. I'm really glad that the dad did stand up yeah. for his daughter and didn't, moving this woman into his house would have been incredibly toxic. Yeah. And I think he probably saw red flags. Um but continued down that path. That's my problem with him. He said that he loved her and love is blind. I mean, I think that we, I I do think that love is blind. You can get blind to seeing things right in front of your face that you would recognize in other people's relationships, but you do not see in your own. Cece's mess. Yeah. (laughs) New girl. Cece's a slob. Cece's a slob. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. I agree. I am. I'm just, I'm very glad that this dad stood up for his daughter. Agreed. And that he did see it before it was too late and did, did damage that was irreparable. Yeah. Way to go, Dad. Can I think you, imagine you let it go on too long, I, but way to go. If I moved Ava in, like when we first got together, and I was like, money. <laughs> money. <laughs> What's her allowance going to be? She needs the big room. What's her? I, yeah. That's something that you, as you blend a family, she like a you, bigger bed. you find common ground on how you're going to handle all those things. Yeah. And you do have to discuss it. And it, you know, it gets complicated to figure all that out along the way, but you do it together. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one actually comes from Oh No Consequences. We kind of know how this one's going to go, you know, just by where it's at. But this one is titled, Am I the Askinoff for Yelling at My Brother Who Didn't Give Me the Job? Alrighty then, a little bit of backstory. My 27 female brother, 30 male B, immediately started dating this girl, Emily, after dating his ex, C, 10 years ago. I really liked C and thought they had a life together, and I was so mad at him for chasing after some other girl instead of staying with M, who was better for him. Emily and B have been together for 10 years, but Emily and I had never gotten along. I told her when I met her that I wanted redheaded nieces and nephews. C was a redhead, and she is not. She doesn't really know B. They'll come back from trips or concerts and say they had fun. I know he's lying. He never liked Taylor Swift before her. He's faking it for her. But when I remind her he doesn't like Taylor Swift, they both get quiet. I stayed close with C and we thought they'd break up. I'm fine with Emily, but she has gotten mad at me. But it's always over the small things. B graduated residency and is starting his own family medicine practice. I am a nurse practitioner who has not been able to find a job, and they are hiring for a nurse practitioner, and I thought I would be the perfect fit. I reached out to B and told him I'd absolutely take the job and didn't get a response until he called me. (laughs) Wait, that was the message? Didn't even like apply for the job, just responded to me like, I would be delighted to accept this position. I guess Emily has quit her job to manage the practice, and because of the tension over the years, he doesn't think it's a good fit for Emily and I to work together. I was dumbfounded. I asked if Emily made this decision, and he said he hadn't asked her, but I know this was her. I sent her a text telling her I thought it was unfair of her to ruin my career. Emily could get a job anywhere, but I can't. I don't know why he's okay to work with his wife and not me when we used to be so close. It would make more sense for me to work there because I have a medical background, and she doesn't. I don't know why she has been a against me from the time they got together, but it's hurting my feelings and I can't stay quiet on it now. It's impacting me professionally. 
Emily responded cordially like she always does, but she used calmness and fake kindness to ma manipulate people. She said she was sorry to hear this, but she wasn't sure what happened. She said she'll talk to B to get caught up to speed, but it sounds like he has made this decision. I wasn't the kindest back to that because I know it's not true. B called and yelled at me. He was so harsh, I immediately started sobbing, but he wouldn't back down. I hung up and texted him that I was crying so hard I threw up, but he never responded. Our family has always stayed out of it when they're mad at me. My mom said it was okay to ask, but I needed to take the answer. I'm okay with the answer, but I'm getting it for the wrong reason, which I don't think is fair. Hold up. Hold up. I'm oh, I'm fine with your answer. I just don't like the reason that you gave the answer. I think your reason for saying no is bullshit. I'm going to hang on to that one. It's got to be useful. It would be it would be so great for us to work together and be close again. Anyone could manage his office, and even he said that M was sacrificing a high-paying job to invest in his career, and this was the perfect excuse for her not to. I just want them to see it the way I do, and I'm so upset that they won't just consider it. Am I the asshole for wanting the job and being upset that I didn't get it? Thoughts? Um, it got so bad that I had, I had to start reading it as I imagined her to be. You know, I had to start embodying the character. She's, she's terrible. And yes, we'll delulu her because this, <laughs> this, it started with the text. It started with the text that was, that was, I would be so delighted to accept this position. Um, yeah, you're delulu, you're entitled and you're a bizzo. Uh, and you sound like just the worst, just, just the absolute worst. So, um, I'm going to DFHB hear you as well. You got this whenever you messaged her or you called and, and talked to her and blamed her for everything. And he did make this decision on his own, but you cannot accept it. You can't handle the truth. That's the problem here. You can't handle the truth that, that somebody didn't choose you. This might be the first time in life it's ever happened. However, I don't I don't know, but you certainly aren't handling it well. Um, and yes, you are going all the way up to ask Hone Wong. Luckily, they have an opening and you don't have to apply. All you got to do is accept the position. It's exactly perfect for you. Congratulations. Ask Hone Wong. It's all yours. You got the job. You got the job. It's amazing. Congratulations. We'll throw a party. We choose you. You have been chosen for Ask Hone Wong. It's a high honor. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder once again with another Reddit story for you. This one comes from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Will I Be the Asknot If I Didn't Invite My Fiancé's Kids to Our Wedding? My fiancé, 43 male and I, 29 female, have been engaged since February and are just now sending out wedding invites to our guests. My fiancé has been pretty uninvolved in our wedding planning because of his busy schedule and not being interested in planning in general, but I have made it clear to him exactly what I want for us, and I had thought we had a very good communication on the subject. One of the things I had made very clear to him is that I do not want any children at our wedding. I think children, especially young children, are too young to even remember such events and just end up causing trouble. He agreed with me on the subject, and I never brought it up again until now when he brought up needing inv invitations for his ex-wife and their kids. For context, he has three children from his ex-wife, ages 4 through 10. His age kind of gave the context clue for around what it was going to be, but hearing their ages definitely seals the deal. I don't want to disclose the full custody agreement, but I will say he doesn't see them very much. I met them a few times, one of which was at my sister-in-law's wedding, and I know they can be terrible troublemakers. You uh, it's not looking good for you, OP. The youngest one is especially defiant and spent all of my sister-in-law's wedding scream crying. The other two aren't much better, and the mother does little to discipline them. I corrected my fiancé on the matter, reminding him it would be a child-free event, and he looked at me as if I was crazy. I reminded him of all the times his children have misbehaved at formal events, but he was firm on his belief that they were his children, so of course they would attend. This would also mean his ex-wife would attend, which is its own problem in and of itself. I think the whole matter is ridiculous. A child free wedding is child free my husband and his family whom he told me without whom he told without my permission disagree am i the astronaut uh before we dive into the update here 
I think we're all on the same page here. Yes, I, I went ask on two, thinking there was some hope for OP. There is none. There is no hope for OP. Uh, he told his family that I was an asshole without me giving him permission to tell his family that I was an asshole. That pretty much says all you need to say, right? I, I think your worldview is a little bit different here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, e, uh. Um, worldview's a little bit. Off. I think your world might be spinning in the wrong direction, OP. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to be child-free when your partner has children. Update slash edit. Reading these comments, I think a lot of you have a misunderstanding of my character. I do not hate my fiancé's kids. I actually like them quite a bit. But I also know them, and I know that they can have a tendency to misbehave. They do not like me, especially the oldest. I don't want to go around accusing children of scheming against me, but they are already opposed to the idea of me marrying their father, and I can imagine that they may be especially prone to distraction at our wedding. If your kids hate her, why are you marrying her, you dipshit? Some of you have wondered about the degree to which my fiancé sees his kids, claiming it to be an important context. He has them for half of the summer, and he sees them on most holidays and birthdays. That's pretty much it. He is on good terms with ex-wife, but not has not always been. They are in the process of changing custody agreements. I probably should have noted this earlier, but me and his ex-wife do not get along at all. We actually were good friends before my fiancé and I started dating. Sadly, she now hates me for that very reason. I do not want her at my wedding at all, and I have made it clear to my fiancé that this is non-negotiable. Also, he and his ex broke up shortly after she got pregnant with the youngest they did not know at the time. I officially started dating him a few months before the birth of the youngest. There was no cheating involved. <laughs> um, Yeah, it's shocking that, you know, all the people that are going to be important for you to get along with to have a successful relationship here, you don't get along with. And also, following it up with the, I have made it abundant, abundantly clear that this is the way it will be is not indicative of you being willing to communicate and compromise to have a successful marriage. Can't imagine why everybody opposes you here. <clears throat> also, I have a feeling that even if somebody agreed with you, you would treat them as your enemy or see them as your enemy, right? Like it's, it's all people have to be doing exactly what they want. Exactly what you want without question. You want, you want people to command around. You don't want, you don't want, humans in your life you don't want to connect with another human being you want someone to obey uh is this is this the female version of the brozo uh, earlier who who left his family to be with uh, the gal who who he just wanted to to listen to him and obey him this is the bizzo version the bizzo version yes uh op you are an ask on one you're 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 terrible uh and alice oh yeah 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 uh, there are there are problems that are going to prevent you from having a successful relationship, period, especially if that relationship involves other people. You can't control the ex. You can't control the kids. You're sort of controlling your fiancé here, but that's getting ready to blow up, too, because thank goodness he's like, uh, yeah, no, my kids are coming. Um, but I imagine that you are just a monster as a step parent and i'm staying i'm saying step parent because you <laughs> the bonus mom title does not apply to you i'm sorry that's something you have to earn and want to earn i'm i'm glad that this is going to blow up this has to right this is going to blow up they are not going to get married they are not going to be together uh and thank goodness because you sound poisonous maybe reevaluate <laughs> Hey, Dusty Thunder here, and I wanted to thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that content, and if you did, please make sure to like, subscribe, and most importantly, share. Also, you can find swag and so much more at dusty-thunder.com, and you'll find even more content on all of our platforms. We're on TikTok, YouTube. We now have an official Facebook page that we'll be posting stories to as well. We have podcasts on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and so much more. You can see all of our content platforms on Linktree, which is linked in my bio. Engage with us wherever you're enjoying content and do your best to avoid the Askonauts today. Thanks again.